Maybe Alex! What up, gang? Gerard Butler back at it again. And again, this review is a little late. Um, you've, you've probably already seen it or, uh, or you've decided not to go see it based on other people's reviews. Still, though, I went and saw it and I figured it would be a waste if I didn't give you my opinion on it. Uh, and that movie, again, is uh, London Has Fallen, sequel to Olympus Has Fallen. Um, wow. Now, that's not a wow for how great it was, but more of how insane it was. Believe it or not, it's a really, really violent film. Now, I know what you're thinking. Olympus Has Fallen was a very violent very violent film as well. Um, but this had something else to it, and, and I, I believe it to be in Gerard Butler's character. You see, in the first film, I didn't feel like Gerard Butler liked killing people. All right, so... Typically, your hero, let's let's say it's John McClane from the original Die Hard. The original Die Hard, not the, not the newer ones. I specifically want to talk about uh, the old one. You know, John McClane didn't want to be there. He would have given anything to be anywhere but where he was at that very moment. He didn't want to kill a bunch of people, uh, even though, like, he was good and efficient at it. It's not what he wanted to do. He just, you know, he just wanted to see his wife, blah, 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 blah. Then you've got Gerard Butler in this movie. Now, that was kind of, uh, take a step back, actually, in Olympus Has Fallen, that was kind of Gerard Butler's character. Like, he, he didn't like being in the situation. Now, I'm not saying that he necessarily liked being in the situation in London Has Fallen, but there were times where he seemed to really take satisfaction in killing people, which made it kind of awkward for me sometimes as the viewer, because I'm like, I don't feel like you should have killed that person right then. He kind of had his hands up in the air. He was, you know, surrendering. I think that's a war crime, if I'm not mistaken. So here's your basic plot. Uh, the Prime Minister of England dies, and all the world's leaders, including the President of the United States, show up to the funeral where, shocker, uh, the terrorist attack, uh, killing a bunch of people and, uh, and trying to get off with the President. That's it in a nutshell. And, of course, the only solution is with the one-man wrecking crew, the one-man army, uh, Gerard Butler, who, shockingly enough, sounds less Scottish in this film than he did in Gods of Egypt. So, there's that. I mean, I don't know. The acting is fine, I guess. It's, you know, it's as good as it needs to be, I suppose, for an action film. And the action is, is mostly quite enjoyable, to be honest. What I ended up having a problem with, though, was... The complexity of the plot, not the movie plot, but the plot of the henchmen, of the terrorists. Um, I mean, so much had to happen for this plot to be executed correctly that it becomes almost unbelievable. Now, th they'll explain this plot, you know, device away uh, by saying, oh, well, they're, they're using, they're using the cameras, uh, the closed circuit television in London, and that's how they knew where all these people were at any given time. But let me break down a few situations for you that just were absolutely absurd. So you got like the French prime minister, I believe, uh, who's sitting on his boat on the river and he opts to, instead of immediately going to his car to go to, uh, the funeral, he opts to, he wants to sit on the boat for another 10 minutes or so. And what ends up happening is a, and this is not spoiler material. This is all like in the first 10 minutes of the 15 minutes of the movie. Um, he, a boat, a, a big barge comes floating by him. That's wired with explosives and it explodes and it kills him. How did they know that he was going to sit there for an extra 10 minutes? I mean, what if he had just gotten up, gone to the car and driven away? Did they have a backup plan for how they were going to kill him? And furthermore, what would have happened to the barge at that point? Would they have exploded it anyway? Or would it just, you know, like, ah, eh, well, we, we'll save that for a rainy day. Another situation was, like, the, the Italian prime minister, I believe. He decided to go tour uh, some castle with his wife or girlfriend, um, and only the wing of the castle that he was in had explosives. And, and it explodes and he dies. And I'm left wondering, like, you have to do that. Like, you have to wire the place for explosives, so... How did you know that he was going to end up being right there? How did you know he wasn't going to go to like some ice cream, sh ice cream shot, excuse me, ice cream shop instead? 
I mean, how'd you know that the Chinese prime minister was going to be stuck in traffic on the bridge? Right next to your damn vehicle that gets exploded. And that's not even, that's not even scratching the surface with some, some of this absurdity, right? So, for example, there's a scene, right, again, this is when the takeover's happening. Uh, there's two rows of police officers. The first row turns around, because they're bad guys, and they shoot the second row, who are all good guys. How did the, how did the good guys not realize that there's an entire row of people that shouldn't be there? And it goes further. I guess it's like an honor guard or something. You know, those dudes with the black fluffy hats, you know, like this tall and they're supposed to like stand at guard and you can't touch them. And, you know, if you do, they might beat you up. But, uh, but you know, it, it's like they, no matter what happens, they have to just stand stoic and, and stoic, stoic and all that good stuff. Um, well, they're doing this like honor guard march, right? With their guns and everything. And two of them break out of the, of the guard and start just firing on everybody. I'm like, how did the people in your line not know that you weren't supposed to be there? Presumably, they're all friends. It's just dumb. Really, really dumb. <sighs> I digress. The plot makes no fucking sense. But if you can get past that, I guess it was a semi-enjoyable movie. If I'm giving it a score, which I am, I'm gonna give it a C. Can't love it. Can't hate it. Alright? If you like blow em up films uh, and you don't mind senseless plot... You're probably going to enjoy it, all right? If you're, you know, a fan of the Die Hard films, you'll probably enjoy it, okay? Um, even though this is, you know, a step beyond Die Hard, it's still, a, you know, a fairly enjoyable film. So, I, you know, if you want to catch it at the theaters, by all means, personally, you know, if I could turn back time, I would have waited for DVD or, uh, or Netflix, something along those lines, so I could just, you know, be in my house, eat my popcorn. It's a lot cheaper. Anyways, that's the basic gist. Um, so what do you all think? Um, have you seen the film? If you have, what do you think about it? Uh, make sure to let me know in the comments section below. Are you likely to see this film? Again, let me know in the comments section below. If you just want to say hello, let me know in the comments section below. And as always, guys, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. Uh, go to movieholics.net. Leave us a question there. We always answer, so please leave a question. Uh, it can be about anything. You just want to know, like, what my shoe shot, shoe shies, shoe shies, what my shoe shies is. Let me know. If you want to know about the film industry, I work in it. You know, I'm not the I'm not the expert by any means, but I could answer some questions. If you have anything, let me know. And uh, that's it. I'll catch you next time. I love you all dearly. Deuces.